Drill presses are fantastic machines. Not only can they bore holes with a high level of accuracy, but they may be used to do all sorts of other handy tasks. They're also incredibly powerful machines, and some folks have lost fingers, hands, arms, and even their lives because they didn't know they were doing something stupid with their drill press. In this video, I'll give you some of my best drill press tips, including some things I bet you never knew you could do with your drill press. I'll also be sharing some of the worst things I've seen people do with these, including some I'll bet you've done yourself without knowing how dangerous it can be. By the end of this video, you'll know how to get the most out of your drill press while keeping yourself safe. Now let's get started. This is a great tip for aligning your table. Bend a stiff piece of wire, such as from a coat hanger, into a Z shape. And you can use this to ensure that your drill bit is perfectly plumb to your table in all directions by noting if the wire drags consistently all the way around to the table's perimeter. A drill press is not a router or a milling machine. The chuck is connected with a tapered shaft that's merely press fit up inside the spindle. Side loads can cause this chuck to drop out and you don't want a sharp spinning cutter in it if it flies towards your body. These magnetic parts holders are great for sticking to your drill press column or the side of the head. It's just a quick place to secure chuck keys or commonly used drill bits. I'll link to a good inexpensive one below this video. Gloves are an absolute no-no at the drill press. It does not take much to catch a loose string or the tip of one of the fingers and you can get your hand or even your entire arm wrapped around this spindle with devastating consequences. A fence can make it much easier to repeat the same hole in multiple work pieces or to drill many holes in a straight line. A simple strip of wood can serve as a fence, and two fences can securely hold small parts as well. Drill presses are very top heavy. If at all possible, you should secure the base to the floor to avoid tipping this over on yourself. If that's not practical in your shop, consider adding some weight to the base to help stabilize it. A handy way to hold small objects is with a wooden screw clamp, which has a nice flat surface that's perfect for stabilizing your parts. You can add a second clamp turned to 90 degrees to provide more support, especially for round objects. You can even attach notched blocks to the jaws for holding small cylindrical objects. I once sliced my wrist open, drilling a hole in the handle of this. If the bit catches on something hard, such as steel, the object can be wrenched from your grip and spun around like a helicopter. Always clamp down metal objects while drilling. The holes and slots in a drill press table are there for a reason. Use them. For example, a bolt and a stick of wood can make a quick hold down so you can keep your fingers safe as you work. The quickest way to kill tooling at a drill press is to use too much speed. You have to adjust your speed, often by changing the belt settings for larger bits. Your drill press may vary, but if your tool doesn't already have one, here's a diagram of how different pulley combinations can achieve different speeds. And here's a chart listing the recommended speeds for hard and soft woods. I'd take some screenshots and print them out for your workshop. Don't forget that a drill press isn't just for making round holes. You can use it to remove waste for joinery. I do this with mortises. I've even done it with half-blind dovetails. I'll link to some tutorials about this below the video. If you can't read the label on the side of your drill bit, you can quickly determine its size with an inexpensive drill gauge. I'll link to one below this video. I keep it near my drill press, and it's handier than you may think for cleaning up the bits that you never put away. I saved the best one for last. Here's one of the coolest things you can do with a drill press. I'm going to dull this chisel so badly that some of you might shed a tear. Then I'm going to restore it to a razor sharp edge in seconds, not minutes, seconds. I'm going to be using my drill press and a couple acrylic discs. One has some 80 grit sandpaper on the bottom and another has 220 on the bottom and a leather strap on the top. You don't have to make these. You can buy a set. They aren't expensive. I'll link to them below this video. I'll also be using a simple wooden jig to keep my chisel aligned and at the proper angle. You can easily build this jig yourself. The plans are even free. I'll put a link to those below as well. I am using a plunging motion to reduce heat buildup. After less than 10 seconds on the 80 grit, I can already feel a heavy burr on the back, so I swap my discs. This time I'm using 220 grit to refine the bevel. But again, 
I end up spending less than 10 seconds on the sandpaper and I'm ready to remove that heavy burr on the back with the leather strap. I also touch the bevel on the leather and when I do, I raise the handle up just a tiny bit. This concentrates all the polishing right along that cutting edge. Altogether, the whole process from the first grit to the last strapping takes under a minute. What really makes this work so well is the sandpaper. It's not regular sandpaper. This sandpaper is covered with tiny, precisely shaped ceramic pyramids. Those cut and shave material more efficiently so they build up less heat and they stay sharp a lot longer. And remember, you're not going to be pounding on your edges with a hammer. For routine sharpening, you only need one grit and then the strap. So that means about 20 seconds and you're back to work. Give this a try. I'll put links to everything you need below in the video description. I'll also pin them to the top of the comments so you can find that easier on a phone app.